So we'll see how this works. Let's recall we were simplifying fractions. Remember, all your fractions need to be reduced. They need to be simplified. And um, what were you guys using? The process that you were using um, was prime factorization and you were also using um, the cancellation property, okay? You use a cancellation property. So that those are the things that we're going to use. So this is just somewhat of a review from uh, last time. And I'm going to show you and I'm going to make the claim to you really that if you know how to um, simplify fractions, you know how to multiply them and you know how to divide them. Okay? So this is why you really care about the method I'm going to show you because in, in the long run, you're really going to you know, benefit from it. So, all right, let's try this. How about if we try something kind of scary like 84 over what? 212. Okay, remember this is, we already talked about this topic. We already talked about how to do this. And um, there's a reason I'm choosing a little bit larger numbers, but how do you factor these numbers, 84 and 212? Remember? I'm going to factor 84. 84 is factored as how? What two numbers multiplied together give you 84? 2 and 42. 2 and 42? Um, could you have said 4 and 21? Yes, remember, it doesn't matter what two pairs of numbers that you start with. It doesn't matter. Because in the end, you're always going to end up with the same list of prime numbers that when multiplied equal 84. So if we started with 4 times 21, is that 84? Are any of these numbers prime? No. So break down 4 now, and you're going to break down 21. What two numbers multiplied together give you 4? 2 and? Two, are these numbers prime? Yes. yes, remember we put the list of prime numbers the other day. 21, what two numbers? <laughs> seven and three are three and seven. Notice they're, they're all, these, these numbers are prime as well. So we factored the number 84. Does everybody agree with that? We now have to factor 212. So we're going to take 212, factor 212. What two numbers do you want to start with? 53 and 4, is that 212? Is that true? Or maybe you said 2 and, is that 10, is that 106? 2 and 106, 2 is prime. What about 106? You're going to do 2 and what? 53, okay, 2 is prime. What about 53? Is 53 prime? You guys know? Is 53 prime? Okay. 53 is prime. Okay, so now that you have the prime factorization done, what do you guys do with that? Well, here's what you're going to do. 84, you're going to replace 84 in your fraction with 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. You're going to replace 212 with 2 times 2 times what? 53. You guys okay with that? Okay. Remember the cancellation principle. Let me write this down. If you have a triangle times a square over a triangle times a diamond, okay, what happens here? Cancel your triangles. Right, and what's, what's left? Square. Square over your what? Diamond. Diamond. This is your cancellation principle. Okay, to point out some details, you do have to have multiplication here. <coughs> Top and bottom, multiplication, and it has to be the exact same value on top and bottom. OK, 
okay, in order to cancel them. So take a look at what you have. Don't you have these uh, string of multiplication here? So you satisfy the multiplication part, right? Well, now what do you have to satisfy? The same number on top and bottom. If you see the same number on top and bottom, you're free to do what? Cancel. Two and two. Gone. Is there another uh, pair of numbers I can cancel? Two and two. Gone. Can I get rid of this three? Why not? There's a three here. This number is 53. Okay, so you have the number 3 and then the number 53. They're not the same, so you can't what? Cancel, Cancel them. What about 7? No. no. So what I do is I go back and I circle the numbers that are left. The reason I do that is, again, because when you start canceling everywhere, it's very easy to see num um, you know, to not really see what's going on, that there might be things you thought canceled. So go back and circle the numbers uh, that are left. So what happens now is multiply the 3 with 7. You get 21 over what? 53. 53. Now guess what, ladies and gentlemen? This is redu reduced. It's simplified to lowest terms. Okay, You could bet the farm on it. Now, a lot of times people look at this and feel those numbers are too big. They can't be simplified. Well, no, they are. Okay? Because there's nothing that's going to cancel here. So you're done. Okay? Does anybody have any questions on what we just did? Right? Isn't that what we worked on um, Monday, I guess? Right? Okay, just to kind of again warm you up, wake you up. Note, what if you had to simplify? You know, 84x to the second power over the 212x. Okay, what if we had some variables along with our numbers? It's the same concept, you're right. 84, again, is written how? 2, 2, 3 times 7. And you guys know, how do you write this x squared? X times x. times x. Good. It's an exponential. Remember that? Mm -hmm. It's two copies of the base x that it's multiplied together. Now, what about 212? Two, two, times, two, two, two times, times 2 53. times 53. And if you see the x next to that number, it's implied that it's times x. Remember that? So the criteria that you have, multiplication is satisfied. You're free now to use the simplification or the cancellation property. You're going to cancel your twos, your twos. we already been through the three and seven. What do you guys know about this x? It's gone. Can I get rid of this one too? No. no. Circle what's left. Because it's very easy to see things that are, you know, I guess there or not there. Three times tw uh, seven is 21. This will be 21x over what? 53. So this is a review a warm-up of some of the things that we did last time. Okay, does anybody have any questions on this from last time? Okay, I'm going to show you about multiplying fractions, but I'll first show you the format, and I think maybe we'll talk about where it comes from Okay, after that. But here's how you multiply fractions together. And I think, really, for beginning algebra, for a lot of you, this still should be review, because um, I review with the fractions, then we move on to solving linear equations. So it still should be somewhat review. Is that true? OK. <coughs> All right. Multiplying fractions. That means I have two fractions here. Here's one fraction. You OK with that? And this is times another fraction, maybe. Oh, what? Diamond over a happy face. OK, so do you guys remember, how do you multiply fractions? Do you guys remember how to multiply fractions? Huh? Do you, what do you mean by cross multiplication?